Good morning, Matt. It's uh, Simon Clark, CEO of American Lithium. We are a lithium developer focused on the Americas with uh, two large lithium assets, one in Nevada in the US, one in southern Peru. And at the same time, we have, uh, we have one of the largest undeveloped uranium projects also in Peru. Simon, good to see you. Good to see you. Um, look, I want, wanted to catch up. Um, you've got two of the kind of hottest commodities out there in the shape of uranium and lithium. Um, market doesn't seem to um, care, though. You were, I think, you know, 12 months ago, $1.1 billion company. Um, today, you know, down around 400. Uh, has the shine come off? Has the reality set in? I don't think so, Matt. I mean, I, I would argue that we are better today than we were a year ago. Uh, we've continued to drive the projects forward and you know what we're dealing with with is 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 macro factors that are somewhat out with our control or or pretty much totally out with our control um you know we are caught in the risk off trade i think if you look at lithium in general um you, you know by definition it's a you know it's an early it's a nascent sector most companies are therefore junior by definition and when you have a global risk off trade you know, no one's looking at, uh, at at the specific companies so much. So, you know, I think I think we've been hit by that. Um, as I say, we've we've advanced both project, well, all three projects, and we can talk more about that. Um, we're we're in good shape. And and the key thing, what's different this time around, Matt, from any other cycle, as you can see from my hair, I've I've been through a few. Um, is is the, the the commodities have never been higher and so you know normally stocks follow commodities down but the stocks have come off and the commodities are higher than ever and of course we're also seeing uranium start to have a run as well so to me it's not logical but uh, it, it's the world we're in right now and we all we can do is focus on building our company and moving the assets forward and that's what we're doing okay so you said oh, we're a better company now than we were 12 months ago i mean what have you done in the last 12 months that you know would lead me to believe that that's true yeah i think I, I you know i think on both on both projects we've continued to drive forward the, the 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 understanding of of what we've got the ability to extract lithium at economic prices um and uh, you know and we've it, it's taken a while but we've managed to uh, get back on the ground in peru and start drilling at falchani uh, and moving that project again, we had a little bit of a, you know, a bit of a stalemate coming out of COVID, sort of compounded by changes in government and things like that. But we seem to have a period of stability that's allowed us to really get back on the ground and drive that ahead. And in Nevada, we've had a major drill program, which is we've learned a lot more about the deposit. It's now feeding into finalizing our maiden PA on the project. And, and again, we've done a lot of, I mean, we could have definitely moved sooner and come out with a, a, a just banged out a PA last year. I, I don't think it would have been to the quality that people expect of us. Uh, we've done a lot of work on the Met side. We have a what we believe is the best lab in the world in Ansto, you know, out of Australia, the big nuclear um, group that that has moved very much into lithium, and they they understand not only uranium uh, mineralogy but lithium, hard rock brines, clay stones, and so they had real issues through COVID, but we stuck with them because we think they're the best. And uh, you know now we're in the final push to get the PA finalized. So I would say we understand our assets a lot more. We have a very much after the plateau acquisition, we've got a very integrated team that I think is first rate. Again, there are not many good lithium technical teams in the world because it is so young. And I, I think I think we've actually really brought together a great team. So lots of good things happening that, again, are just not reflected in the stock price in, in, in today's world. But, but what can you do about that, right? So you've got two, two PEAs and, and one coming up um, on, on Makassani. Um, but the, 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 I guess the market or the, your shareholders definitely and, and other investors looking in would expect you to kind of move through these phases. Is the current climate, does it lend you to think, well, actually, um, let's not rush into anything until we, the market kind of works itself out and we, we, we kind of see where this all, the dust settles, as it were. Or do you say, well, actually, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, the IRA, um, the Inflation Reduction Act and other funds making monies available to 
companies like yourself who are going, going through the development phase to feed into those kind of critical minerals um, component for the for the US, do we need to actually speed things up? I mean, what, what are all the kind of factors influencing the, the allocation of capital and, and, the, and the timeframes in which you deliver these things? Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. I mean, I mean, we, we have a strong balance sheet. So, you know, our, our view of the world is right now that, that this will correct. Again, the commodity's never been higher. Um, I don't see any forecasts out there that do anything other than show that uh, demand is growing and, and supply is tightening, you know, more and more. So uh, the, the, the fundamentals remain strong uh, against that backdrop. If that wasn't the case, we might take a more cautious approach. But, but um, you know, we are, we're moving ahead on, you know, with our budgets, with our plans, with driving the projects. Um, you know, it's 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 definitely a world where uh, you know you put out news and often it falls on deaf ears. But uh, at the same time, I do believe if we continue to move the pieces forward, that uh, you, you will get recognition for that as things as and when things turn. And I can't tell whether that's three, six months, nine months. But again, with the strength of the commodity, I I I, I fully believe it's going to happen. Um, and I and personally, I think it's going to happen sooner rather than later. So, you know, and, and as I say, Matt, we didn't, you, you know, we have had some delays. We are in a post-COVID world. I think you can look at the sector and say everyone's off. I think you'd probably look at our stock and say, you know, out of them, we're probably off more than most, which I think makes us a better buying opportunity. But some of that reflects, you know, that we it, we, we did it. We have taken longer to get the PA done on TLC and. Again, there's good reasons for that, but um, you know, I think that is a real catalyst that can help us get a re-rating as we bring it out. And and I think the fact now that we are starting to show that we're drilling in in Peru, we're we're bringing in the byproducts at Falchani, we've moved that project into feasibility on the environmental side. So we're making some really strong steps. And uh, again, I think at some point people are going to recognise we are probably the the most undervalued of, uh, of of the peer group. You know, you certainly look at where claystones and hard rock assets trade, and they're typically in the 0 0.5, 0 0.6 times NAV right now, and we would probably end up being about 0 0.2 times. So, you know, again, you can there's lies, lies and damn lies and statistics or whatever, but I think the reality is we have large scale assets that uh, you know we're proving. You can extract lithium from very economically, right? It's, it's, it's interesting. Then we've got LME Week uh, on here in London. I was at a dinner last night talking to um, bankers and some industry players, battery manufacturers. Um, they they feel that they kind of want some level of certainty from government as to what's going to go on economically. You know, what are the measures that are going to be put in place? We're, we're, we're seeing um, we're seeing. I think the Canadians they they went for um, one. 0.5 interest rate. I think point five, Europe, yeah. we've gone for points, point seven five here, waiting for the US to do, do their thing. Um, that's going to give a little certainty. You kind of know where you stand and they're, they're looking for that. But I, I think the, the general gist is industry is moving, moving ahead. Um, how are financiers are waiting? Uh, I, I guess to sort of see how that all, all plays out and maybe the next, next, I say six to 12 months might be um, a case of you know, wait, waiting to see. Um, but after that, they expect the next three to five years to be, you know, an extremely strong bull market for metals. So hopefully they're right. Um, but you've got to do your bit between now and then. So we, we talk about moving, you know, a, the PEA ahead, but you've already kind of got two other PEAs on um, uh, TLC and, and Falchani. So how quickly do they move through the phases? Because you're going to need to you need to prove that these things are motoring. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we we have completed our drilling for the year at TLC. We will factor that as well into the PA. The PA is still slated to to come out at the end of the year. Um, you know, if uh, barring barring no more delays, we're well on. To, you know, we believe we're well on target for that. I mean, if it did slip, it would be early New Year. Um, but, and you know there are a few factors that we don't always control, but uh, it's it's dry it, it's moving nicely. Um, we're in the final phase now on the models and the economics, and we're now just updated the mine plan based on the the latest resource out of TLC, which has has grown. So it's all coming, Matt. In the next two or three months here, we will 
get you know we'll have the resource out we'll have an updated pa out and as i say on the peruvian side um we, we'll have drill results from falchani we're all we've already announced we can um you know we can uh, also bring in potash on that flow sheet we're doing the same with cesium um and we would expect to, ha to be able to update the the already robust pea um in Q2, I mean, for example, if you take the Falchani PEA and you move the price of LCE from 12,000 a ton, if you move it up to 17,000 a ton, which is still cheap in today's world, you're seeing most PEAs come in at, in, uh, at around 20,000 a ton, you more than double the MPV. So, you know, there's a lot of very uh, big value creating steps that are going to happen in the, in the coming months. And, uh, you know that news flow is 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 is, is going to start percolating. It's interesting. I, the, a lot of companies actually putting out the, these studies, and they're using today's prices. Forget the twenty percent discount or thirty percent discount to today's prices. It, it, it it's an environment where it, it's it's like um, well they're doing it, I'm doing it, and um, you know from banking world we would have you know we. We'd be discounting these these prices by forty percent because you never know what's coming around the corner. Um, but in an inflationary environment and high cost environment, you kind of need to put your best foot foot forward and maybe factor in some of these these forecasts that are being made. I mean, has, has lithium got far to run? I mean, prices have been extraordinary for the last twelve months. You know, it's it's it's. Um, I, I mean, lithium. I've been involved in it in battery metals for several years now, and I've never seen a supply forecast on lithium that has been hit yet. It's um, it's a it's a very very tough commodity to extract, and it's a very tough commodity extract to extract economically. Um, you know, there's plenty of lithium in the world, but how do you get it out? It's it's difficult. You know, brines is a difficult operation. Uh, you know, melting melting pegmatites to form a spodumene is extremely challenging. Um, and, you know, so it's difficult. And these projects tend to take more time than people expect to come online. Um, and you just can't turn a dial and ramp them up. And, you know, as we continue to see the demand for electric ve vehicles skyrocket, you know, there's just talk today from GM about really pushing pushing things uh, faster even in, on, the, on the U.S. side. And, you know, I think right now there may be a little bit of a lull even with China because, you know, they've had all these lockdowns. And I think when, when, when that comes out, I think it's just going to be ratcheted up another level. So, I, I, Matt, I don't – spot prices are very high. To me, the really underlying theme is you look at the prices that SQM and Albemarle and others are now getting for their forward contracts. You know, they've all moved from – you know, 10, 12,000 a couple of years ago through the 20s, and they're now into forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a ton. So, you know, those contracts have a, have a while to run. So, yeah, I think if you look at long-term pricing, will it stay where it is? At some point, there's going to be more of a balance in the market, and it'll come down. But, you know, if you look at from where it was historically, for us, in today's world, we're looking at um, – Op OPEX going up by 50%, probably over what it would have been a year or two ago. And it does make me laugh when you see companies point to reports that are already so out of date on the OPEX side. But, you know, that increase is more than made up for for the price of the commodity. So I think even the most conservative commentators would tell you that the long-term price of lithium, you know, over the next... Um, 20 years or so would be north of eighteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. So it's, it's a big jump from where it was. I mean, if you remember when we bought Plateau, I, I think, um, I think carbonate touched 6,000 or six and a half thousand dollars a ton. So it's, um, the, I mean, the reality of it is that it's, it's a market that's going to take a while to balance. Um, and even when it's when it does balance, if you look at the demand cycle, we've got to continue to bring on more and more sources of lithium to meet the, that supply. And you know, and uh, it, there's big players involved now. There's uh, all the autos are getting involved in their own downstream operations. It's not like that. There's any question. I don't think in 
and, and certainly not in my mind that this is now going to happen. But, but, but here's the interesting thing for me that I've sort of been picking up certainly with the conversation now with battery manufacturers is that um, yeah, th- there's this desire to kind of move upstream. So that's good, good for miners within the battery you know, sphere, wh- wh- whatever you maybe nic- nic- nickel, um, you know, copper, graphite, wh- whatever, whatever your thing is, in your case, lithium. Um, the money's going to be there. Which, which is, which is refreshing for, you know, as you say, you know, perhaps been through a few cycles and there are moments in time where the money's not there for, for mining juniors. Um, but they, they were very keen to point out, they're saying like, not all companies that say they're going to get into production will be able to get into production. And that may be a, on a commercial basis or certainly an economic basis. So they're not sort of, um, counting it all and saying, well, I think we'll be fine because there's a, realization that's you know some will and some won't um how do you or what do, do you need to do to be able to sit in front of those guys and go we are going through the phases and we are one of the ones who will i you know again again matt i, th- I think with us it's it's um it's it's the credibility of the, the of the team we've built i think first and foremost i i think um you know lawrence and ted um that their experience gained at Falchani and and proving that you could take uh, you know a very unique style of mineralization to battery grade in in a relatively short period of time you know if if it wasn't for covid um and you know some of the political changes in peru that definitely delayed things a bit um that project would be well through feasibility you, you know it's it's uh, there's a ton of um there's a ton of drill control and I think the thing that, 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 that you, you know, you can look at a, a bunch of PAs out there and, and, you know, I don't want to say it too loudly, but some of them are not worth the paper they're written on. Um, but I think if you look at Ansto, I mean, we would say the best laboratory in the world. DRA, one of the leading global engineering firms, the work they do is first class and the amount of work that we've done and continue to do on understanding the mineralogy at uh, at um, Falchani and now TLC, uh, you know, I think really gives us a lot of credibility and you know belief that yeah we haven't just put together a, a report that you know do we believe even with that report that we can actually economically produce lithium? Well, a- absolutely, I think we've proven that we can, and uh, I think we'll continue to to, to move along the development cycle and you know there will come a point as, as you pointed out in this industry building these mines is complicated it's expensive is it better for us to you know um, hand on to one of the bigger players not hand on obviously sell um, or, or partner with the right players because lithium is a complex business um, you know, I was speaking to the, the guys at Albemarle the other day, for example. I mean, they're at Silver Peak. They're only an hour away from where we are at Tonopah. We we talk a lot. Um, and, you know, that's an asset that I think um, is, is is declining and they'd like to, to build it up. But they said to us, you know, there are no good lithium geologists in the world. Uh, you know, they Albemarle has a team of, I think, on the geology department, a team of one. Now they are fantastic on the chemical side and the metallurgy side and the process side and building stuff, but they need those, these companies need groups like us to go out there who have developed expertise in finding these assets, proving them up, de-risking them, and showing that you can economically recover, you know, at least technical grade, if not battery grade lithium. Um, and, 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 and that's what they need. I mean, that's going to be, I, I think you're looking at a bunch of the majors now looking at the sector. Obviously, the Chinese are all over it in parts of the world where they can be. They obviously can't do anything here or Canada or Australia. But, um, you know, it's, um, it, 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 it's complicated, Matt, and, and, and you've got to have that level of expertise. And, I, you know, I really do believe you're going to see that M&A space continue to heat up on the lithium side. Right. Well, I, I, I agree with you. Um, I think it's going to be needed because, as you say, there's just not the, the skill sets to solve some of these technical issues, very technical metal um, problem that needs solving um, with, with lithium. Um, okay. Just to, to perhaps was um, uranium, because again, t- talking of uh, M&A, a lot of M&A happening in that space, uh, lots of new entrants happening in that space. 
I know, I know we talked last time in terms of your, your strategy for Makassani. Um, anything changed there um, or was anything that we should be encouraged by? No, I, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I compare uranium to, 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 to lithium and, you know, you, you think of uranium, you think nuclear, you think radiation, and you think incredibly complex. But actually, mining it, especially where it is in Makassani, is 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 actually a pretty straightforward business. So, it's a it, it's a great asset. Um, it's um, it's it's one that we think is going to continue to grow. Uh, you, you know, what, our, our goal for for Makassani, as you know, is to is to realize some some value for. American lithium, which I don't think we currently get any value probably in our stock price, you know, it's hidden within us um, and um, and for our shareholders. And, you know, we're looking at the right way to do that. So we've taken a bunch of, of, of tax advice. We've we, we've looked at, you know, putting the uranium concessions in its own vehicle so that, you know, when the market is ready um, and I, I, I hopefully we're we're very close on that. You know, I think we will. Our, our view right now is that this is likely better in its own its own listed vehicle, with some cross management. Um, you know, because we're obviously managing it today, and there's a bunch of um, milestones coming up on Makassani. But again, I think it's better for for, for all if um, it's in its own vehicle as we, you know, as we redo the PEA, as we do further drilling there, et cetera, et cetera. So. Um, we've thought long and hard about the the right way to actually build return for shareholders and 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 also get some value for American Lithium, and you know I think I think we're pretty much concluded that the right way to do it is to spin it out. We've had the right tax advice. Um, I think we can do it in such a way that will be very well received by the market, um, and and there's lots of growth to come in that company. And as I said. Again, you look at it as somewhat like Falchani, but even more so because I think it's a, it's an easier commodity. It's right at surface there. It's hosted in a pretty pure form. The the the, the amount of acid you need to recover the, the uranium is very small. So economically, it's strong. It's a low capex. I think it can move very quickly. You know, once it's in its own vehicle. You know, through feasibility, and uh, and and then you know, do you do you, do you build a miner, or again bring in a partner? And um, I think that's one from a scale perspective where you know, if you are going to build anything, it's probably uh, it's probably one that is is manageable. Um, albeit, again, there's obviously some big players in that space with the knowledge and the balance sheet. So uh, for us, we're just going to. Put it in its own vehicle. Let let it let it continue to hit milestones and build value, and um, and and take it through the development cycle. But I think it's a it's a first class asset, Matt. You know, when I got when we bought it, I didn't really understand it. I mean, I don't have much knowledge in the uranium space myself. I've learned a lot about it. I've I've learned just what a quality asset it is. And and if don't forget, it's taken 20 years to build that district. So you know Lawrence and Ted and the team. It took a it took it took time, and and they had Fukushima along the way, which clearly didn't help. Um, and uh, you know, so I think it's going to have its day. For us, you know, obviously we'll we'll monitor the markets and figure the right time. I mean, if if things remain uh, tough in the world, then you know maybe we maybe we push it out to to um, early next year. If if uh, if we get a it looks like that sector is is starting to to roll again. I mean, it had a bit of a pause over the summer, and if timing's right, then you know we may be able to announce something. You know, th- this year um, the paperwork will take us, uh, you know, a few months after that. It will be a plan of, uh, you know, it'll be a, a share reorganization and a plan of arrangement that will take a few months to implement. But um, you know, we'd certainly like to to um, to drive it forward and launch it sooner rather than later. But again, we'll, we'll watch the market for that. Yeah, I hope no, that it, makes it, sense. It, it, it. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I understood. Um, and obviously, when, when it does hit the market, it's going to be hitting the market with a lot of pounds uh, in, in the ground. Um, and uh, yeah, economics, we'll, we'll see what the market makes of well, those economics. And, and, I mean, as you know, it had a, 
you know, before Fukushima, when I think it was 10 million pounds, it had 125 million market cap on its own. It's now 125 million pounds with a robust PA that, you know, I think if you updated it today, it would be even more robust. Um, so I, you know, I think it will, I think it will really uh, get a good follow it. Should do, should do. Well, like, it was just a really, really kind of catch up here. I'm sort of intrigued by what you say with regards to, you know, it being a better company than it was um, 12 months ago. Um, I guess you go, you're a discounted stock um, on that basis at, at the moment. So message to shareholders is, you know, bear with us where we are advancing things. Markets are tough. Uh, message to people who are not shareholders looking in. Well, I, I, you know, I think if you believe in the lithium story and the uranium story, I mean, obviously, if you want access to to Makassani, um, you know, and the new company that it'll be in, you need to buy our stock and 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 hold it. Um, but uh, I think in general, we are probably the the most discounted against our net asset value. Um, and part of that might maybe we have a you know we have a large retail base and in these markets um, th there's not always that, that that amount of patience. But I think if you believe in the lithium trade, we have a, a very large um, asset base um, and the projects are all uh, are all moving forward in the right direction. So again, I truly do believe we're a stronger company today than we were when we were six dollars this time last year.